Hello, growing revolutionaries. Um, now, as you know, if you're a long-term viewer to the channel, we always like to reuse, repurpose, recycle as much as we can on the little farmer's farm and to grow all year round. That's our, um, that's our aim, really. That's the long-term uh, game that we're going to be growing all year round um, without using artificial means of heat <clears throat> and fossil fuels and things like that in order to do it. Um, but in this episode, I'm just going to show you what we are growing at the moment up at the little farm and also what we're growing in. Specifically, the Tiki Tunnel, which is our trampoline framed um, recycled material polytunnel uh, that we built this year. So, uh, yeah, take a look at that and what we've got growing on and I hope you enjoy it. All right. Catch you in a bit, boys and girls. Bye bye now. This is the Tiki Tunnel, we call it the Tiki Tunnel and it's a 16 feet by 10 feet wide trampoline framed polytunnel. We created this tunnel from recycled 10 foot trampolines and each trampoline will give you two hoops so you need two trampolines. So um, when the parents are getting rid of the old trampolines that the kids either no longer want or or they've been damaged or whatever you just need to clear them out we pick these up from uh, free cycle which is a, a, a website where people just want to get rid of stuff and we pick these up for I think we paid five pounds for one of them and nothing for the other one and with the trampoline frames you get the actual hoops you get the uh, the sort of metal poles that keep the uh, the netting up uh, you get the springs with them obviously and you also get the trampoline itself which is a really thick um, black mat, strong black mat in the form of a disc that the kids bounce on. And we built that from two trampolines as I just said and, and it's great. I mean I've had to pay for all the timbers. If you're a long term viewer you'll have seen the process of how we made this and there is a, a playlist down below. That plots the uh, that plots the build, um, but it's great. It really is good. You can obviously buy polytunnels, bespoke polytunnels that are already built for purpose. But this, for me, is better. And the reason that it's better is the actual bars tend to be thicker than the frame that you get from a, a commercial um, polytunnel for this size at least for the 10 foot size the bars are thick you get all of these um, straight supports that you can turn into um, into sort of lateral bracing for your framework and the clamps well the clamps just clamp on and you clamp those onto uh, to the hoop frames the semicircle hoop frames You'll see all of this process in the playlist. Uh, the grooves where the springs go in to the trampoline hoop can be used for hanging things off. We've got that bar there where we put uh, hanging baskets on that during the summertime. We've got these racks there, again, that are supported by the springs to lift things off the ground and put a shelf in there. I'm just drying out my um, my beans on here. So they're going to be um, dried out and we'll collect the seeds for the French climbing beans. There's some pea seeds in there as well. I'm just leaving them in here uh, until we need them to dry out uh, to be used next year. And so, yeah, uh, this, this was all built from reclaimed, recycled materials. The tables that are in here were, um, we've used uh, pallet wood. We've had to buy some wood as well, so all in all, this this builds co this builds uh, costs around about around about two hundred pounds, which is probably about two hundred and fifty dollars um, to create it. And we've got the uh, the polycarbonate sheeting in there as well. That was about two pound fifty three pounds per sheet. All in all, I'd say about two hundred pounds uh, to make it. All the rest of it we've got from skips and from uh, just basically going around and finding wood 
wherever we can find it. So all the shelving that's in here that I'm growing the um, seed starts on, I'd say 90% of that was from reclaimed wood. This was an old um, um, kitchen unit, etc. Right. Like I say, you can watch that in the playlist. These flags, these um, paving slabs, we found them from a place where people, so somebody was putting down some uh, some decking and they were taking all the old paving slabs up. So we got those and brought those up here for the pathways that are in there. There's some underneath um, uh, the sort of um, spaces between the, the beds, the growing beds. That's reclaimed decking. I think that was new wood. It's probably cost about twenty pound for the, for the two beds that are there, but yeah, check it out. That check out our build. Um, so I brought you up here today just to just to take a look at what we've got growing on from the seed starts. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start here. Actually, might as well start here with the meteor. So we've got the meteor peas, and these are a pea um, variety that you can grow over winter. They're a specific variety that that grow in the winter time in the colder darker months so the meteor peas we started those off uh, three weeks ago inside these little uh, the, 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 these little uh, pots and already they're coming up as you can see the 14th of the 10th they were put into there I think the only one that hasn't fired is this one so we've got 23 pea plants that we've started off I've put some Sutton Dwarf uh, broad beans in there which was getting a little bit concerned about because they weren't doing very much but it seems that they are now they are just starting to come through now and again they were the, they were the ones that were put in on the uh, on the 14th I'll come back to that one in a minute it's a bit of a special one that got some onions there those are um, um, chives but they don't seem to be doing very much at the moment but the spring onions these are lisbon white lisbon spring onions that uh, that are sold in uh, are sold in rows inside there and there's quite a few there's quite a few coming through of the white lisbon that was the 18th of the 10th so that was the 18th of last month that we sold the seeds for those ones the white lisbon spring onions and hopefully over over the um, the next few months we'll get them to grow to full fruition which will be about that high and uh, and we'll have spring onions for spring probably mid february to march time we should have some springies there and take those as green onions onto our spinach we have spinach of four different varieties of spinach there there's winter giant there's trombone amazon and red velvet these are the red velvet the amazon the trombone and the winter giant same um seed starts reflected over there seems that the red velvet and the amazon seem to be good seem to be doing the best there um these are all winter giants though by the way so hopefully we'll have about six winter giant spinach plants on all the rest of the spinach that we can plant out probably in the next three or four weeks but I'm guessing I'm going to be putting those into the um, into the cut flower buckets and keeping them indoors, keeping them in the greenhouses and the polytunnel. Getting this uh, a bit too damp in here, I think. So um, we're getting issues there with a bit of um, a bit of mould coming on, coming on to these senshu Japanese senshu onions. I'm going to have to get those out in the ground pretty quickly, I think, because I think in here it's been very, 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 very wet weather. That we've had for the last few weeks and that's uh, that's not helping really we don't want it too wet and too damp um pink germador garlic casablanca white casablanca uh these are shop bought garlics but they're like large cloves of shop bought garlic i'll show you some more examples of those in a second or two um some more pink germador well, actually, actually, those are shop bought, shop bought pink garlics. Not sure the variety. Might be Germador, might not be Germador. We know that these are Germador. These are seed garlics. Electric red onions. Again, an overwintering variety, but we're getting the mouldy issues as well on these. 
might not be the best place to keep them inside this polytunnel. Those are Japanese Senshu. Again, these will be going outside into the ground pretty soon. These ones were started um, now about eight weeks ago. So we've got broccoli, purple sprouting broccoli there. F1 Spring Hero of the cabbage. And we've got the kale there, which is winter boar kale. I did start off some um, rocket, Trizia rocket, but doesn't seem to be doing very much. Got the odd little seed that's coming up. That was started on the 18th of the 10th, but we're not getting too much action. Again, I feel it might be too damp inside here for them. Maybe put these inside the greenhouse instead of leaving them in here. What you get inside a polytunnel, oftentimes, is you'll get a little bit of a microclimate. Uh, condensation builds up inside of them and uh, you do get what, what could only be described as rainfall coming down inside the polytunnel so you've got to be cautious for things like that um, onions in there again these are the senshu they're doing quite well Japanese overwintering onions called senshu they're going in there along with our cauliflowers these are winter cauliflowers um, yeah so hopefully these are going to be doing okay. They, they, these have been growing now for um, over 10 weeks. I think it's 12 weeks. But obviously in the winter time, things slow down and the growth slows down quite considerably. So you don't get... Um, I mean, usually in, the, in sort of spring, summertime, you'll get cauliflowers coming through within 12, 14 weeks. You'll get the, the cauliflower heads. But these are going to be another, another few months. Hopefully they'll grow slowly and mature slowly and we'll get some nice decent curds from those cauliflowers. Garlic in there. Again, that's the seed garlic, which is our um, Casablanca garlic. We're growing those in the, in the buckets. These are the cut flower buckets that we get uh, for free from the supermarkets. These ones are from Tesco's and the, the squared off uh, buckets, which are quite good. Um, nine. Oh, sorry, six. Six, six garlics going in each of those, in each of those buckets. Casablanca. Oh, these are the sensu, yeah. That's Casablanca garlic. That's Casablanca garlic that's in the bed there, growing alongside again the cauliflowers. More sensu onions, more cauliflowers, more sensu onions. So that's what we've got growing on inside the polytunnel. Now the reason I'm sound, sounding a bit uh, subdued is because I am a little bit worried. And well, not wor well, not really worried, but I'm nervous as to how these are going to do. At the moment, they're they're growing quite well, aren't they? But as the as the nights get colder and darker you never know these are winter hardy plants and they're inside the polytunnel but uh, yeah then it's not the ideal heat conditions and light conditions for good growth but if they can continue to survive through the winter come early spring what we'll get in early spring is we'll uh, we'll have a really early crop you know There'll be a couple of months earlier than anything else. So we'll be able to eat earlier. Experimentation is what it's all about. And this is a particular experiment that we've joined in with um, a couple of other growers. Terry King at um, Terry's um, Allotment Gardening on a Budget. And also Haughty Hugh inspired us to do a challenge. And it was an upside down bulb challenge. Somebody said that bulbs will grow whichever way you plant them. Most people plant a bulb, uh, bum down, snout up, so that it, that's probably the best way and correct way of doing it. But a bulb in the ground will grow whichever way it's orientated. So this particular challenge was to see if we could plant a bulb upside down and it would still grow and upside down until the roots are coming out facing the sky. And um, and the shoots coming out facing the earth, and it has to turn then and 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 go up. So we started that a while ago. So let's have a look. 
Okay, so we did it with the uh, Casablanca garlics. And on the left hand side, USD stands for upside down, and on the right hand side, RWU stands for right way up. And as you can see, both are growing. The right way up one's slightly in front of the uh, upside down garlic, but they're both growing. So that'll be interesting to watch the progress on those and see if they can actually come to fruition and we'll get um, we'll get fresh bulbs of garlic from both of them. It's just a bit of a daft experiment, but you never know, do you? I think it'll work. So yeah, we want to try and grow without heat. We've not got any heat in here, but I'm going to see if we can use in selected varieties and things like... Um, you know, sort of non-energy warming solutions to see if we can actually grow all the year round year round growing of something now, because we started several uh, seeds and and plants off a while ago before, before the, the, the cold weather started to set in like 8 to 10 weeks ago, back end of the summer we do have plants and crops that we are growing outside at the moment um, that will continue to grow unless we get some mega frosts and freezes will continue to grow over the winter months and we can actually get leafy greens um, all year round not massive amounts because we just don't have the land for that but we are going to be growing food all through winter in this bed which is the uh, potato bed you'll see in a, a few examples of that right as you can see we're going pretty mad for garlic and that is again the uh, it's the white garlic it's the Casablanca 25 bulbs in there we've got the we've got the beetroot still got beets coming through and chard now chard should as I say, if we don't get any too severe, um, severe cold snaps, the chard should continue to grow all the way through our British winters in zone 8. And we could be potentially cropping that all the way through until June next year. Just take a few leaves each time I come down and, uh, and there you go. That's multicoloured beetroot. A different uh, different coloured types of beetroot in there. Just seeing if it's bulbing up. Yeah, we're getting we're getting action. We're getting beets farming around the base, which is cool. But yeah, we just pick a couple of leaves from these, and we can put them into stews and stir fries and things like that. And hopefully through through the winter months, we'll be getting some uh, some veggies from the plot. The same with these winter salad crops. Um, we just pick a few leaves from these each time we come down and we have a small salad with it or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you're eating the fresh vegetables all the time from the plot. There's amaranth there as well, red amaranth, beetroot, uh, some more char down there, some rocket and mustard. Um, so yeah, I mean, the slugs have devastated this side of it. Mmm, the eternal enemy, the slug. Um, but yeah, again, there's some more char down there and etc. Uh, yeah, keep cropping it, keep eating it. Our leeks. Um, I've been pulling leeks as we've needed leeks from this bed. And I... I'm going to be getting them all out, I think, quite shortly because they're starting to bolt. They're getting stressed and they're bolting. These are the seed heads that come up from the centre of the leeks. So we're going to be taking those out. They're getting a little bit rusty. So this week, I think all of those leeks are going to be coming out and we're going to be making soups with them. Leek and potato soup, green soup, that kind of thing with them. Still got some peas. That was a mixed bag of peas I just threw into the tub. And uh, yeah, they're still coming through. We're still getting the peas on them. So we're going to be taking a lot of those off and uh, and devouring those probably again in the green soup. You can eat the tips as well, the leaf of, uh, of these pea plants. So as the winter comes stronger in the next few few weeks, they're going to be starting to die off, I'm guessing, these peas. But we'll continue to crop them. There's my little herb bed. <clears throat> got the rosemary, the thyme, uh, and the sage in there. 
I did have some Welsh onions, but they don't seem to have survived very well. You win some and you lose some, boys and girls. You've got the uh, French climbing beans over there. I'm going to be picking the last uh, of the crop from these French climbing beans quite shortly. And then they're all going to be coming out. I'm going to be saving, again, some more of these seeds because they've just produced and produced and produced. We've had loads and loads. We've got oh, from, from these climbing beans, we've been probably taking, over the last five months, we've been taking probably a good pound in weight each time I've come down here, three times a week. So three pounds of beans for the last five months from those uh, from those climbers. Definitely going to be saving the seeds from them and um, and sowing them again next year. More of the onions in the ground. The Senshu Japanese overwintering onions there. Going to fill that up with all the all the start of. Um, Bulbs, bulbs that I've started inside the polytunnel are going to be going into this, this bed and filling that bed up. This bed's going to be covered up in a bit with the cardboard, but that one, we're going to be having the onions growing in it. In the same way that we've got the onions growing in there. We've got the red electric uh, in the middle and the set and the sensu on, on both sides. More Casablanca garlic. I'm, I'm obsessed with Casablanca garlic, I think, aren't I? More um, chard, Swiss chard, and more beets down there. And I'm going to clear those out because they're looking shot at a monkey and the slugs have destroyed them in that bed. Um, and that's the uh, Cabernet de Nero kale and spring cabbage, but it's been, it's been devastated by the slugs. As you know, we've got a problem with slugs. We hate the slugs. They are absolute pigs. So, there we go, guys. Uh, that's what we're growing over winter. We'd like to know as well what you're growing over winter. Now, if you can just let us know down below in the comments what crops you're going to be growing over winter, what you've already started off, and what you're hoping you're going to be um, successful with over this winter period with the dark nights, the cold, and all the rest of it, and whether or not you believe that it's viable to grow over winter and if it is viable, what is viable? What crops, edible crops, can you grow over winter? To be eaten over winter and to be um, sort of developed on until the springtime when they're ready for harvesting. What, which crops? Okay. We want to know what you've been successful with and then we'll, we'll try that again next year. And we can share that between everybody and, um, and together we can continue to perhaps all year round grow in zone eight. Um, in the UK and elsewhere okay take care of yourselves boys and girls and each other and also remember we love you all Mwah. if I don't see you through the week I'll see you through the window it is um, Tuesday today Tuesday the 3rd is it Tuesday yeah it is it's Tuesday election day in America uh, so I hope things turn out okay for you guys over there in the States now, um, as I say, I'll be uploading again probably on Thursday this week, and then we'll be doing some weekend stuff, but we've got work commitments as well at the moment, so uh, we're, we're going to be doing what we can. So, uh, yeah, good luck, God bless, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye, boys and girls.